Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Game Debate Livecast. This week, oh, I've got the stream running and I can hear myself. <laughs> Alright, there we go, that's fair. Um, yeah, so this week we are going to be talking about um, a bit of the different gaming news from this week. Um, I think we're not actually going to be on Game Debate Embedded this week, which is a bit different than the other weeks. And uh, this week, uh, due to technical difficulties, I'm joined by only Jack. Jack. Hello. How's your week been? It's been alright. It's, uh, it's been a bit stressful, but it's all good. You know how life is. Yeah, stress. I um, mm. I spilled tea over my laptop this week and uh, absolutely. Oh killed it. my god! How? Wh- uh, why do people drink tea and coffee around laptops? It's not okay. Well, I didn't. I didn't deliberately like think. I don't know. I didn't deliberately think that I would like spill it over it. It was a Monday morning, and I was just pretty tired. Oh, okay. And nothing. Okay. Nothing was working. Actually, I. It's a Monday morning. I'll let you off. <laughs> I actually spilt it, and then I thought I lifted it up and got it away in time. But then, um, but then it didn't. It just like seeped through slowly, and then it just powered off. And now, every time I turn, you it left on, it on after you spilled. So you spilled stuff on it, and you didn't immediately turn it off. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think it like went actually on the laptop. I thought it went like <laughs> on it, and then like over a bit. So, uh, yeah. Then it just. Oh died. dear. I took it apart. Another motherboard just won't turn on every time it turns on, which is uh, depressing. <sighs> Some people say, "Yeah, my iPhone." Like I spilled it in water when I turned it on. It it broke. So yeah, because you uh. Water and electricity aren't, aren't friends, so. <laughs> cool, it's, yeah. One day, they'll make waterproof everything. Apparently the iPhones, I don't know why it isn't, yeah. Apparently the iPhones are meant to be sort of like splash-proof now, but um, I'm not sure if it's like... All right, if anyone's watching, if you own an iPhone, I encourage you to throw that in a bowl of water and <laughs> let us know if it was waterproof or not. I think I think you can, yeah, I think you can splash water on them. They never officially said they were waterproof, because if you do, then you just have to basically be how they have to like they'll get sued if anyone does put it in but um but yeah unofficial tests so yeah chuck your phones in a bowl of water and see and send us the results send them to me tim at game see if you win a prize <laughs> we'll show if you record it we'll show it on next week's show and we'll do a <laughs> like mythbuster thing it should be quite good yeah cool so this week it's been a bit of an interesting week for some of these so we're going to talk about um, Tom Clancy's The Division first. We're also going to go a bit into sort of the history, or not the history, the future of e-gaming and uh, what challenges there could be presenting it as it tries to sort of move forward as a medium. And we're also going to be going over some of the rumours from Reb Dead Redemption 2, which should hopefully be coming out this year, according to Ooh. secret sources. I don't know whether it will, but uh, I think everything's looking like it will, so something interesting to talk about later on hmm I'd be surprised if it doesn't come out like they they know they know that people love that game they know that they're gonna make a shit ton of money I really want I really want to see the next bully game that's what I want to see from Rockstar bully 2 at least still sells for like a shit ton of money is it like get it, 20 quid I got it on Steam again yeah but yeah it's still 20 quid Damn. that's a good game yeah. though. apparently cool okay so our first story this week. So Tom Clancy's Division has been out and about for the last few years. It was announced back in 2013 at E3. And uh, next week, we're going to see the first release of the closed or the second uh, closed beta coming out for Xbox One, PlayStation and PC. Um, so if you haven't heard what The Division is, The Division is Tom Clan- is an o- online only open world third person shooter game. And um, it has some survival elements, and it's going to be published by Ubisoft um, with assistance from Red Storm. Uh, if you don't know who Red Storm are, they've actually developed quite a few um, of the other Tom Clancy games, and they also worked on Far Cry 3 and 4. Um, I think what they mainly focus on is PC ports, so I imagine Red Storm will be focusing on the PC version of this game, which they have said will be significantly better or different uh, compared to the normal version. Um, it's running on the engine Snowdrop, which has naturally never been used before, and it's developed by Massive. Um, who are a game and engine developer, and um, and yeah, so the the basic premise of the game is that there's a smallpox pandemic that spreads on Black Friday, um, and what the what the bad guys do is they transmit it by planting it on banknotes. So, well, they plant it out, it then sweeps across the U.S. and I think it's within like five days or so. Basically, everything fails, all the services go down, and uh, no one has access to food and water, and the whole country just crashes. 
probably as quick as I imagine if Donald Trump got in power. <laughs> topical. Oh, topical humour. <laughs> so if we have a look at the system specs first, they've been announced. So minimum and maximum system requirements uh, both require at least Windows 7 64-bit. Um, no two big surprises there. Um, minimum recommended requirements uh, demand that Intel i5 processor, uh, about 6 gig of main memory RAM and 2 gig of video memory RAM. Um, you can probably run this using a GTX 560 or a Radeon HD 770. Uh, for the recommended specs, um, we're talking Intel i7, which seems to be everything. Everything seems to be i7 nowadays, or the AMD yeah. FX 8350. Um, it also recommends 8 gigabytes of system memory and 4 gigabytes of video memory. Uh, you can also run it on a GTX 970 or an AMD Radeon R9 290. Can you play that, Jack? Is that good for you? Yeah, I don't know. The thing is, I don't know if my CPU is... Because like, it's an i5, yeah, but because it's overclocked, I feel like it's fine. Because I still think i5 is better than a lot of i7s, especially considering the price difference. Um, but the rest, I've got that. That is my card, so... the power, It's only recommending... It's on the minimum, it's like 3.1 gigahertz, and then on the recommended, it's 3.5. So that's... Not... Yeah, well, I'm, on, I'm overclocking to like 4.3, I think, so... That should be all right. I should be okay. I don't know. I, I think I still be able to put on my 770. I think I think I can still work with that. I think you I definitely can. will be able to because well, I've seen people playing Fallout and they were saying that Fallout's gonna have ridiculous recommended specs and stuff, but didn't end up being harder to play for my friends than any other game. Yeah. I can. I, I actually play Fallout fine. I'm actually been quite surprised how long my graphics card has lasted me now, and I still haven't had to upgrade since I got it about probably over a year ago now. But it does have four gig of uh, video memory on it, which is oh four gigs. Yeah. I think that saves me dream. quite a bit, yeah. It's, even though it's quite pretty old, it seems to not be that bothered by sort of anything new coming out. Um, so we also, if the game will be starting first, if you want to join the closed beta, it will be on Xbox One on January 28th, and then it continues onto the PS4 and PC for January 29th. Um, it ends on the 31st, so PC and PS4 get a day less than the Xbox One people do on the beta for some reason. Um, it's a bit rude. I know, yeah. I don't really see the reasoning for it. I guess they didn't want to do everything at once, it makes sense. But like one day after, it's like, what? I don't get it. Um, you're going to be able to preload the game 48 hours before. Um, Rumours have it that the, that the beta is about 26 gig. Um, final game probably be about 40 gig in total, which uh, would be quite chunky. I think most games are like that now, aren't they? 40 gig isn't as... as Open world ones, yeah. yeah. And yeah, if you want to have a go, you can get on the pre order, you can pre order, which gives you instant access to the beta, or you can sign up to the beta waiting list on Ubisoft's website. Uh, if you just Google, uh, you can find it there and go through to that. So, have you been following much of the division, Jack? Yeah, since literally the first th shit they released at E3, like it was ages ago now. I don't know, like three years ago? Yeah, um, 2013 it was announced. I was instantly psyched. It was like around the same time as. I started getting into Daisy and stuff, and I just I really enjoy open world stuff with PvP elements. Like I really like the idea. Um, and then I found out they weren't doing a PC port, and I was crushed. And then they said we are doing a PC port. I was like, sweet. And then, like, yeah, I've been following it. I just don't know what to think. If you know what I mean? Like, I uh, I've I've switched between super excited for it and thinking no, it's going to be just another game. What I was looking forward to because they were describing it as an MMO. I was just yeah. thinking it's just going to be a next big MMO that I could play. But after looking into it a bit, it turns out... So so the PvP bits they're doing, um, they're in like special areas. So they're called dark zones. So you've got this huge city where you can walk around and uh, do different missions and stuff. And you have like a home base right in the center. And um, if you go into a dark zone, that's basically like the player world. So when you go in them, uh, if you start killing players, you end up getting a bounty on your head. And if you survive the bounty, you get to keep all the bounty money that was put on you. And if you don't, um, all the other players get it as well. If you get killed, you lose all your loot and everything. So that's pretty pretty standard, I guess. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 it'd be quite nice if it was like fully MMOE. But I guess I guess with consoles and stuff, you're never gonna. They just haven't seemed to try it yet. Where's my Assassin's Creed MMO or like? Well, how come Planet Side Two can do it so well? Is what I don't understand. How come Planet Side Two can have so many people on a map, and then things like Division have to restrict? So I, I, maybe it's just like me being a bit of an entitled gamer again, but I, what I really wanted was open world PvP anywhere, so I could, the whole map, you know, I could go around it and 
be a dick to people, but like, because when there's a PvP zones, you know that people are only in there. It's just going to be short and sighted. There's going to be no like, oh, maybe we'll be friends. You're just going to kill each other. Like, whereas if it was open world and it was everywhere, I think there'd be a bit more incentive to not just kill people. But if you're in the kill people area, you're going to kill people. Yeah, and I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, they're trying to encourage people to work together and stuff. But from like the look of it. It just is like everyone's. Have yet to see a game that does that successfully. Like Daisy kept trying to add all these incentives, and at the end of the day, it's like. But you're saying if I shoot that one hu- that one enemy, so one character I have to kill, and they lose all their loot, and I get it. Why wouldn't I do that? Yeah, yeah. I get. I guess the only ones that it's like wow and stuff when you like if you go into a specific instance or raid and uh, you're like paired up to attack a load of NPCs. They seem to be the only ways that really work to do it. And everyone always hates each other yeah. anyway. I think when I do raise, or when you do stuff with yeah, random people true. on the internet, you just want to end up wanting to just kill everyone you're playing with. Cause it's Maybe it's just people in general that I have a problem with, not uh, gameplay mechanics and meta gaming. <laughs> so but, uh, no, I do think it looks cool. Like I mean, it's got that Borderlands feel to it, and I love Borderlands. Like I know some people don't, but I just love how it's just like I'm not pretending that I'm like a super edgy, sweet game that's going to change your perception on reality. It's just like shoot, loot and doot doot motherfucker because that's what that game is is just kill things and pick up sick guns um and it's cool like the divisions like that mixed with daisy and a bit of like the walking dead it's got my nerd boner going full <laughs> they actually um so they also announced for the pc version like you said they were going to originally not support the pc and uh they said now oh yeah we are supporting so they actually released eight facts that uh, we host- posted on game debate uh, earlier this week of things about the pc port specifically as well and uh, and some of the facts are kind of weird because they're like sort of fall under the same stuff. Um, so like the first one was they said the division is more than a port. So um, they said they didn't just want to port over the console version, but instead craft an experience that feels native to PC from the start. And uh, apparently that means you can have a fully customizable user interface, um, proper support for mouse, keyboard, and game pads, which is what everyone would expect. Um, apparently the menu navigation will be drastically different. Um, so you won't have to suffer all the stuff like we did and we had to play Fallout 4 with the PC with the same interface as the consoles did. It does, it does, it's sort of a bit of a weird on why people don't optimise their interfaces more for like PC games. Because like a mouse is just completely different to like using like controllers and stuff to navigate menus around. And it does annoy me to hell when I can see, I'm trying to click through stuff and it's like, oh, press A, press B, whatever. I think they know because we buy the game either way. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know anyone who's like, oh, I didn't buy Fallout 4 because they didn't do PC UI. So the developers are just going to be like, doesn't make us money. Why the fuck would we do it? Yeah. Um, and it's just a shame because people say, oh, don't buy the game then. It's like, well, I, I still want to play the game. Do you know what I mean? I just, I don't see why I have to suffer for being a PC user. Yeah. Like, they would never do that to a console. They'd never put a game on the console. And be like, you have to, you just have to deal with the PC UI. Yeah. And so a couple of other things I said. They said you can invite your friends on Steam to play, which I guess is a nice feature. But um. <laughs> so like yeah. every Steam game. <laughs> like every game they ever release. Uh, multiplayer <laughs> is PC versus PC only. So. <laughs> what? How's that a feature? <laughs> what? <laughs> cross cross platform gaming is a feature. You can't be like, oh, we have the opposite as a feature. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what they're trying to convey with these points, but they're pretty... I don't know, they're just pretty weird. Um, they said you can play the division the way you want, which, again, is just referring to like the control schemes. So uh, their first point is sort of like encompasses like a lot of the other points, which doesn't really make much sense. <laughs> um, they said the division is not a game for mods, so they're not going to allow any mod support or anything with it. Standard. <laughs> which, which, again, is a, I don't know if it's a feature or just a fact. Um, they're, they're fact six, but you can customise the UI, which I mentioned in the first one. So that's like, pff, yeah, thanks for that point. That, 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 that is quite good, to be fair, because, you know, you do play some games and they're designed around a specific resolution or monitor. And some games, the writing is, like, tiny. And then you play, like, other games and you can't see any of the screen because the HUD's all over the place. It's always annoying me. Like, I've always been like, oh, what if I wanted my map in a different part of the screen? Is it like that customization? They're treating it very much like a proper MMO. But mm. I don't know, yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how big the dark zones are, because I could, like, I would quite like to play something where I can just sort of run out on my mates and just do something. I just well, that's the thing. Is, I, I imagine they're just these tiny little bits. If they are, like, very big open areas, that'd be really awesome. 
And they've also said that we're getting a PC beta, which we know and they already said. And their final fact was the division on PC supports a lot of hardware. So there you go. They're going to try and make it run on a lot of things. They said we wanted to ensure the game ran well, no matter if you're on a laptop or a triple screen monster computer. And I think we've done just that. They said <laughs> we want to optimize this game and we think we have i <laughs> can't confirm or deny this i'm sure they'll learn a lot in the beta and how it works did you see you think they'd at least push like uh, this type of laptop and this type of computer that would be far too specific i think for them to say that that is true rather just making i bet their benchmarks as well not benchmarks their requirements and way off like everyone is all the time yeah. now um and so the other thing is, I had a I had a quick look at some gameplay from it, and did you notice how they've downscaled a lot of the graphics now compared to when they showed it at E3 in 2013? Like, Happens with almost every game now. They shouldn't be allowed to do it. Almost, it feels like. But they shouldn't. I, I I think it is should actually, unless they. Yeah, because they they should know. They should know that like, every game you make, you end up having to cut back the graphics for optimization. Like I mean, if you, if people looked at Planet Side Two, in, in the alpha. It looked incredible. It was gorgeous. And now it still looks good, but it just looks completely different. And after the whole Watch Dogs debacle, you think that there'd be some sort of like regulation of it. They're saying, you need to say, like, well, I suppose they do in their tiny little writing, don't they? So I guess that's it. But it's just, it's just it's obvious false advertising. Because they've got to stick this up off an adverts now, isn't it? Where it's like not gameplay footage or currently gameplay yeah. footage. But it should be like one like currently running on a stupid mega powerful computer that is of no like it's, yeah it's just it's just if you especially a lot of them they run all these demos as well when they're saying it's going to be Xbox and like PlayStation release everything runs on a PC at E3 so it's like yeah it's always going to they've actually um at the moment the PC demo is completely under wraps so no one can show any footage from it but some footage has leaked and it looks alright I don't know it, it didn't look like it was on ultra settings the one that leaked but um yeah we'll see how it looks I don't think it's going to be as good as they thought we would be or what everyone else thought we would be um the other thing is so i actually got some screenshots from their character customization because i thought that's because when you play an mmo when i play an mmo like a big thing you know what can i look like what what you know what tattoos can i get what scars can i make my hair what purple hats. yeah i get um, little boxes <laughs> do you do you tend to play as like a male or a female in like an mmo would you play would you ever play as a girl character uh, I play I play as a girl, like if I make alts, I usually end up making a girl just for variety, but my first character in MMO is pretty much invariably just a cooler version of me in the game, like as close as I can make it. Um, I don't know, it just feels weird when I play as a girl, I'm just like, but I'm not a girl, this is kind of, what's going on here? Because to me, my character is me, it's an avatar of me. It's like a lot of people that because there's quite because some people always play as girls because like oh I don't want to look at a guy when I'm like running around all the game, but it's some like why are you staring at their butt the whole time? That's my question. Like, oh I don't want to look at a guy's ass. <laughs> why are you looking at his ass? Like well, why aren't you looking at the enemies and the levels and? There's probably like a mass subculture of people that are quite aroused by video game characters and stuff and uh, yeah I don't know maybe it's them, but then yeah it I don't definitely know. is them. <laughs> So if you have a look, so for the division, I've got a couple of screenshots. So top left, um, you can see it's basically it's not as good as Fallout or anything else. You basically have to select from a list of different presets. Um, I think there's about eight faces, uh, about fourteen different tattoos and wall paints you can have. Um, you can change the color of your hair, and uh, and you can also select your gender, which is a quite nice uh, like little feature. But apart from that, there's not really much character customization in it, which again is like the opposite of an MMO. So before, yeah, you know, with some stuff, they look like they're really trying to push a like, customer interface. Then the other stuff, they're not really matching it up, which makes it, yeah, I think it is just going to be a pretty weird, freaky hybrid of um, an MMO sort of action game. I really hope not, because I just think there's such a huge market for an MMO action game. I, I've played MMOs before. I've played all the big ones. I'm honestly just really bored of that kind of, oh, I stand in front of them, press a button, then the damage happens, and I press another button. Whereas, like, I like that kind of instant feedback of, like, I click, my attack happens, not just I press one and then a bar starts loading and I'm just watching my character do things and I don't move. Um, and that's why I like Borderlands, because it was a bit more... Did you play Terra um, at all? No, I didn't. I, I sort of it was, I had a look at it, but the problem with MMOs is that they take so much time from you. 
yeah. I think Terra has been the only sort of proper like action MMO that I've seen coming out. Yeah. Um, or has been out in the past. But DC yeah. Universe has kind of an action-y combat system. You have to do like combos with the mouse by clicking and holding each of the mouse buttons and like sort of like Lord of the Rings Return of the King game style. Um, that was pretty cool. I did play. Was that was that free on Steam for a bit? My game. It's free, free to play. Yeah, I think I did play it a bit. Or I, I leveled up initially and then just got a bit. Well, it's not the best game in the world, but no. But it's an MMO. Okay. It's all right. Yeah. I, I really like Rift that came out like years ago. I never played that. I had to stop playing because all my friends, or well, like no one else, really played it. I think it was just me playing it and like a couple of. Other when, when you're playing an MMO by yourself, <laughs> it's time to quit. Did they had all really cool dynamic stuff as well. We need to just wait for Warcraft 2 as well. The, the Division, it has a, such a great setting. I just, I don't understand. If it does come out and it is this standard generic Ubisoft slush that we've been getting, you just got to wonder why. Like, if, if they put just some effort into it, they'd make so much money. I mean, look at GTA 5. By anyone's definition, that was not a revolutionary game. Like, that was just GTA, but more. And but because there was so much detail and so much shit to do in it and stuff, it was awesome. And um, with Vision, you just get I, I just get the feeling when I watch like a few videos and stuff that maybe it's just going to be quite bland, quite boring. It looks like it looks like Fallout with multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, I think, and I think that's going to be yeah. <laughs> that that sounds exciting to me, but I don't get that feeling from trailers. Not since the f the first trailer. That was really that that really excited me, but since then I've just I don't know. Maybe I'm just too jaded now, but I really really want it to be good. I think it it has all the things it needs, like all the assets it needs to be a good game. So I think what we can do is I will try and get on the beta next week as well and try and have a play and see what it's like. But I don't, I don't I'm not a big fan of betas. I don't really like play testing half completed games for developers for free. Well, it's uh, pretty much completed. They wouldn't shift out a. This is basically just a stress test. Let's be honest. Yeah, and you can yeah they'll tweak some numbers and stuff, but I don't know how much I'll actually tweak. Yeah, it would be uh yeah yeah. I guess I guess you get to get to play a bit of the game early as well. They've not released any of the story as well as anything, and there's a full single player campaign, or I shouldn't say single player. There's a full campaign in there as well, so you're going to be able to like do a load of missions and story stuff which hasn't really been spoken about yet and that's like fully embargoed as well so we can't talk about any of the story coming out just yet but yeah i'm sure we'll see next week what people think of it shall indeed Ta -da. so if you have just joined us this is the game debate livecast where each week we go over the latest gaming news and tech this week i am joined solely by jack who is Hello. in Brighton talking to us at the moment. And, yeah. A bit quiet today, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's all right. It's, you know, it's nice and relaxed. It's a bit more of a civil discussion, I think. You know, yeah. just two, two wise old gentlemen bitching about games. <sighs> that, is, that is probably going to be the future of TV and everything. Once everything is going <laughs> to YouTube now. Which, yeah. conveniently, sort of brings on to our next topic. So... One of the things that um, I've been thinking about quite a bit recently... Oh, put up a banner. I'm trying to get used to OBS still and trying to select everything in time. There we go. Esports. Okay. So one thing we wanted to go over this week is sort of the future of esports. So at the moment, esports is very much on the rise. It's very much set to be the next big trend. Um, so ESPN this week have just... Um, purchased uh, the rights to show uh, some of the Halo Championship Tour that I'll be on with a pool prize of about $30,000. Um, so they're going to be showing some of that. Um, a bit of a backlash there's been from the from ESPN on some parts. So last year, um, John Skipper, who was the president of ESPN and he, in spoke about e-gaming, e said specifically, it's not a sport, it's a competition. Chess is a competition. Checkers is a competition. Mostly, I'm interested in doing real sports. Which sounds a bit damning, don't you think? Yeah. Well, yeah, if you think that sports is something to be proud of, I mean, uh, I don't see how this, like making a distinction between sport and e-gaming makes a difference. I don't think that the culture of sports is necessarily one to be celebrated and excited by and going, yeah, well, they're not like us because we're sports, we're good people. Re really? And like, 
where's that line as well? Like, where's a sport and what's a competition? Like, is that really a distinction? That's the point. We've is already given thing? it its own name. <laughs> Esports. It's like when I send an email, someone doesn't go, well, it's not paper, is it? No, that's right. There's an E in front of it. Do you know what that fucking stands for? Electronic. <laughs> and do you know what esports are? Electronic sports. <sighs> Watch out. It's crazy, I know. Crazy, but I, it just it bugs me because I agree it's not a sport in that it doesn't have physical activity, but that is the only difference between esports and sports in every other way possible. The mentality of the fans, the like tribal way people gather around teams and this online sports, the sort of toxicity of people when they're competing with each other, it's all the same. And I think as well now, you know, the the prize pools and the amounts people are earning are getting to the point where it's basically almost the same. You know, some Dota 2 players are now the, actually the highest paid gamers. Um, some of them have made millionaires from winning tournaments. Um, Jesus. Yeah, I wish I could be a millionaire for being good at a game. Oh, I wish I wasn't this much of a scrub. <laughs> they all retire at 23, 24 as well. And then, and then they just set up their own teams. Yeah. I think as well, they say as well, like, I think I read I read a thing about how e gaming works or how the strategy works and basically the like a player comes along, they'll like create a new strategy, they'll be quite young, or they'll copy an older person's strategy and because younger people are probably just quicker with their hands, they'll do it better and then they'll get too old to do it like quick enough and then someone else will come in and copy them or like develop their strategy a tiny bit and then do it quicker than them and then win. And that's why there's such like a quick turnover of like players going through. Which is um which would have been a nice little career. I think when I was like 16, 17, 18. But I don't think it would honestly like I mean obviously I follow a lot of the League of Legends stuff and you hear a shitload of horror stories about people, you know, the way they work, the people. Apparently, you know, these guys they wake up. I like, so for League of Legends they wake up, they spend 3 to 4 hours watching videos of other like games or like the team they're facing or whatever. Then they practice and scrimmage together for the day. Then in the evening, they're expected to go and play League of Legends in their spare time just to keep up with the movement of the meta in the game and stuff. And you just think, like, yeah, don't me wrong, I love games, but imagine if you only ever played one game, and if you ever, like, got bored of it, if you ever just wanted to play something else, if you just want to take a break, you can't, because your whole life is built on that. And, you know, we, when I come home and I play games, it's to unwind from my day, but they're just playing what they've been playing all day anyway. I don't know. I, I think I think it's not as attractive as most people would think. I mean, don't get me wrong. Making money to play games, it's not a hard life. But um, I don't think it's as easy breezy as people think. Do you think there's many, apart from, like, I guess, the persistence and the fact that you stick at something so long to work, do you think there's any traits? Because, I mean, when you play games normally, there's arguably not many traits and stuff. You can cross over to different careers and stuff. But um, I guess being a professional gamer, it's just the same. You're not gonna, you actually don't get that many sort of like transferable skills or attributes unless you're managing other. I don't think you get any, honestly. Like, what what applicable skills do you get from gaming professionally? Um, you get, uh, I guess, you get a good wrist and fingers, whatever you can do, whatever you can do. <laughs> well, so maybe you can go work in like a Thai massage parlor or something. <laughs> well, my uh, what is it? Key presses per second? What's it? KPI? What's um? <laughs> what's the... yeah. Words yeah, per minute? It's not words per minute. It's like, what's the StarCraft oh, um, 2 players the, what, say? the clicking, how how quick you can click. Yeah, CPM, that's it, click per minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's probably the only skill you really get from it. No, I think... It's actions um, per minute, that's what it is. I honestly think that if you don't end up becoming like an interesting personality or running your own team, you're fucked. That's what I believe. Um, but I don't think eSports e hasn't been around long enough to really... Like, you've only just had people retiring, like big names retiring with huge followings so we've yet to see how they transition into like the next stage of their life and um, i think yeah the thing with the thing with john skipper's comment as well um about mm. it sort of not really being a real game the, the other the other question that i'm thinking about is does esports even need tv networks like does it even need espn to like take I, off and go big because it seems I, to be doing all right so far by itself i think if if you know what esports is, and if you have any, like if you're somebody who's going to sit down and watch Halo, you own a computer or a laptop, and you know what the internet is, and you therefore know that Twitch and YouTube exist and stuff, and it's it's just this obsession with open expanding markets all the time. They're never content just to be like, we're making lots of money on this. Let's let's just make it good and keep doing it. It always has to be let's get more. And that's what happens to Nintendo. Look at them now. Like look at the Wii U. Like, 
no one gives a shit because they just went to the casual market and all their original fans were like, well, no thanks. And I think, you know, when ESPN start paying loads of money and getting like exclusive games and stuff, I'd, I'd stop watching the LCS because of that. It's, um, it's already annoying enough with basketball. Yeah. It's interesting they've chosen Halo as well. Because I think Halo on Twitch, it, really it does about 2 to 10k viewers max on Halo at the moment. Yeah. So I think the, the level, the size of the audience they're trying to get just doesn't seem to be, it's going to be anywhere near what they're expecting. They have done, when they did, um, I think they did some other game stuff before and the ratings were all really awful for it. Um, I mean, I think a lot of it to do with it going mainstream and putting it on TV is something like... Um, something like um, like League of Legends or potentially is a is a bit more complicated for people to understand just sort of flicking over and going through. Where I was like, I think Halo and sort of maybe FPS yeah. type games, maybe even Call of Duty could be easier for someone just to sort of like flick through and sort of watch and sort of get what's going on the right thing away. Is, they're, not, they're not that simple anymore. I mean, when we were playing Black Ops 3, I kind of didn't know what, the f what was going on half the time. Like I'd be running, you know, I'm like, I've got a nice little gun here. And then... Uh, some dude jumps through a window and explodes and kills me. I'm like, all right, so I need to watch out for that. So I run into a room, waiting for a dude to come in, staring through the windows, and fucking roller balls of death roll in and blow up neck on my feet. I'm like, okay, so I go watch for that. And then I do that, and then some guy starts firing a bow that like explodes electricity everywhere. And I'm like, what? What is happening? Like I remember I was, I was standing behind some guy. He just exploded. He just died. Like I don't know what happened to him, but he was just gone. And you know, I play games. I've played COD, but imagine if you you didn't. And you just like, oh, just you know, see what's on ESPN. Oh yeah, sweet. Like, are you gonna have any idea what's going on? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess I guess with like online stuff as well is you got to have like the randomness elements and stuff with this game. So they have to make them quite like solidly similar, don't they? As well. So for like lol. Yeah. You can't. I don't know. It'd be quite cool if they just did get like random bosses coming up every now and again. There's so much more they could do with esports that we uh. Like, oh, we so much more. Moment. But they don't need to, that's the point. It all comes down to how much effort do we have to put in as a company and how much profit do we get from it. And they know that, like for instance, the lore in League of Legends, so many people I speak to, I play with friends, they all say the same thing, people on Reddit. There's a huge amount of people who are like, we think the lore of the game has so much potential, but they don't do anything with it. They just they make up these little one-shot, like... It's like an episode of C CSI. It's like one little story that's got fuck all to do with anything else. Maybe, oh, there's a cool little reference to another character. But there's no, like, development of anything. But imagine if, like, you know... I mean, they did start doing it recently where they killed off a character and brought him back different with different moves. And people went mental for it. But, you know, it just doesn't make them the money. Is oh, look at this different colours on this champion. Or, you know, pay us money to watch it online. Or come see it live and buy our shit. It sounds almost like wrestling, doesn't it? More than like any sort of... Well, it's all the same, isn't it? It's just about packaging something and getting money from it rather than actually improving it or making it develop. Hmm. Yeah, we've got... I think we've got, we've got a bit of a way to go sort of with esports and seeing... Well, Lucas in chat is saying in order to watch esports, the audience definitely needs to be familiar with the game or else it means nothing. And that's, that's it. Like, and that's the problem. It's like obviously putting on ESPN, they've chosen Halo because it's a casual casual game obviously not actually a casual game compared to a natural mobile it's a lot simpler but uh, yeah i just <laughs> may i know maybe one person who would flick to espn see hello and be like oh okay that's interesting um and even then he would he would just go find the actual football i've not watched i've not i don't really watch any esports i don't think i've ever watched anything or like managed to like stay only watch league esports because i play it yeah like, why don't watch CSGO, I don't watch Dota, I don't watch Halo or any of this other stuff. I find League interesting because I play the game and it's cool to see people who I literally consider to be the best in the world. So, you know, to watch them play and see how they play and try and at least absorb a tiny bit of that into my play. Um, I don't really understand. Yeah, like, because it is just like a lot of my mates are like, oh, yeah, Team Impulse, Wankers, Cloud9, yeah, come on. <laughs> and it's just like, we all grew up as gamers. We all got bullied by people like that. And are you really going to just turn into something like that? I think, yeah, I, I really like to see... I think they could do a lot more, like, epic sort of action-style stuff. So, like, if you ever played Assassin's, Assassin's Creed online, where you have to, like, sneak around and pretend to be someone else and, like, slaughter and just, like, take out people by pretending to be an NPC. Like, you think there'd be some, like, almost, like, Brink-style kind of game where you've got people, like, properly running... Even Call of Duty now has a bit of that. 
And if you have sort of like cinematic camera angles and stuff where you could show it. I mean, that, for me, that seems to be where I'd like sort of the evolution of it all to go. That's but... using imagination, Tim. We don't like that. What? Yeah. We like yeah. imagination. We don't want that. What we want is just, has it been done before and made money? Yes, let's fucking do it again. <laughs> and you do just think, yeah, like like Assassin's Creed as a game series, I think the, re the reason I hate it is not because I actually hate it. It's just because I played the first game and thought, yeah, this is the tits. This is going to be the one. And they just never pushed it. But ima imagine if, like, there were these incredibly cinematic angles, and you know, it was very um, intuitive, like like Hitman Absolution almost. Like how parts of that game you really did feel like you were just in the level, did it how you want, use your own brains and your own reactions to get through the level. Whereas, you know, Assassin's Creed it is kind of, oh, you know, you can run up that way, or you can run up that way, but you, it's both to go there. I think it all comes down to we need more dynamic gaming. Then people watch because when you're watching someone play a game, you don't want to just see the same shit over and over. You don't just want to see them grinding enemies or whatever. Yeah, and that's um, and yeah, that's the essence of it, really, isn't it? This of uh, <coughs> sort of esports has to be pure PvP, pure skill yeah. all the way through, yeah. quick. And uh, I guess that's why MOBAs do so well at the moment. Um, ceremonials, uh, two thousand three hundred, yeah. saying about he wishes there was something for Forza. And racing games, I mean, yeah, racing games would be quite a good one to do, wouldn't it? To watch people actually... It would be. ...driving up. And yeah, there is, I don't know why there's just such a lack of everything else in the moment for e-games. I mean, I guess there's a lot going on Twitch now, but I'm sure we'll start to see, you know, we've seen Smash Brothers tournaments this year. And I'm sure, yeah, we're just sort of on the up and rise for stuff to come. <sighs> yeah. Honestly, I don't think you'll see esports gain any traction outside of CS, Dota or LoL. Because... Those three just seem to have the right formula and the right like like fan base who are that committed to the games that they want to watch it. I, you know, because esports isn't a new thing. Like people think it's just appeared in the last few years, but Smash Bros has had competitive shit for ages. Um, all the fighting games, like uh, that's always goes Pro Evo. Is that the tournament? Yeah. Yep. Donkey that's Kong. been going on for yeah for fucking ages. Um, and it's only since Counter Strike, Dota, and LoL have all been like. You know, appearing in mainstream media and stuff, that people have been like, "Oh, esports is the next big thing," and I just think I don't think it is. I just think it's those three. They're just lucked out, or found the right formula, or whatever you want to say. I my theory is I think e gaming will take off like pretty massively in mainstream, but I think we're going to have to wait a bit for like motion capture tech and virtual reality tech to take off because when you've got people like in a full mocap studio, like moving around and doing stuff with like headsets on. And you're fully like tracking their bodies, and they're on like, like a, I don't know, like a treadmill, or you can run around and like run around at stuff. Then you've got like you've basically got Tron then, and um, and then yeah, any you know people can die. People get people get not people don't die, but people will get tired doing that kind of stuff. And I think that that would be like the next step. Like in the next like five to ten years, we'll start to see like proper like athletes becoming gamers. And uh, yeah, that's my theory anyway. Maybe it'd be more acceptable if you actually had athletes as gamers, like competitive people. But I mean, you've seen Star Citizen's been using loads of mocap stuff. I think something like that, where they've got like a the idea is is that the players build the game Eve style. Um, I think that'd be interesting to watch because it'd be like you could have a little like news week or something. Like, oh, this is what's going on. This corporation's just done this. Here's some cool stories from players doing some shit. I'd watch that for sure. I think. Like, I mean, I love reading the articles about Eve Online alone. I don't, I've never played it in my life, but when you read about these like epic corporation battles, it sounds fucking awesome. It's just like uh, Eve is like a spreadsheet game, isn't it? They say it's just like <laughs> yeah, on, no, it is. Count on your beans. <laughs> yeah, just uh, add things to your queue, and then maybe your numbers get better. Maybe they don't. <laughs> it's probably as exciting as the real stock markets and real businesses are, but uh, probably less yeah. evil because they're in game. Yeah, <laughs> no, probably more evil because they're in game. <laughs> Cool. So if you have just joined us, this is the Game Debate Livecast, where each week we go over the latest news. This week I'm joined by Jack, uh, as we have had some technical difficulties with Rob, um, and his internet has gone down. Um, I think he's okay, um, but um, we'll have to wait till next week to find out if he did get through it all right. Um, so far, we see we've just gone over um, esports, and we've also discussed The Division, which will be coming out in open, open and closed beta next week which you can still apply for on Ubisoft's site if you are interested in getting involved, or you can simply pre-order the game and play it through there. So, the final thing I wanted to go over this week 
is um I know everyone you know everyone loves Rockstar games. Everyone loves GTA 5. Everyone loves Bully. You know, Red Dead Redemption came out a few years ago. And you know, typically they're really quiet about what games they're releasing. I mean, you never know what's coming out when. So towards the beginning and towards the end of last year, we've seen quite a few leaks of information coming about about a Red Dead Redemption sequel or prequel, I should say, coming out later this year. So what I thought would be good to this, so I've sort of put everything together that we know into like a quick summary sheet. I'm mean, going to sort of go through and see whether we think it will get released this year and what people are saying so far. So if I just get up my fact sheet, okay. So officially, in uh, 2015, Strauss Zelnick, I think I pronounced his name right, who is the CEO of Takedown, sorry, it's Takedown, of Take Two, um, confirmed that uh, GTA and the Red Dead Redemption are two permanent franchises and that they are working on. Um, so a couple of ex-developers have left as well recently. One of them saying um, that Red Dead Redemption's uh, game has been in development for the last four years. And um, another developer said it will be announced soon, which when you think about it in the scale of sort of like four years, soon could be months, it could be a year. Um, hopefully, we're hoping it will be announced at E3 in April. And um, there's also a Reddit user who went under the name AnonDN1978, who uh, claimed to be um, a, Red, uh, a dev or an ex-dev at Rockstar. Um, he said the game will be called Red Dead Redemption 2 Legends of the West. Um, a pretty generic title. but uh, Yeah, very generic. Almost made up. That's not it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that That sounds like something a Reddit user would think was actually the name of something, doesn't it? <laughs> Legends of the West. Damn, that's like that's, not feeling that. It's disgustingly generic. If it's called that, I'll be disappointed. That's probably the worst league. I don't see why. It should, I think it should be called Red Dead something. Like you had Red Dead Revolver. That was, that was a game that that existed, and like Red Dead Redemption was a sequel to that or a successor to that. What's like if this is gonna be a if this is gonna be a prequel? What's like the prequel word to Redemption? It'd be like Red Dead the Betrayal. <laughs> yeah, Red Dead being a dick. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so they've also said it'll be a prequel. Um, it'll be coming to current-gen consoles, apparently with a PC release um, with a month to follow, which um, seems like, I think that's a bit too early to call, just looking at, like, all the PC ports and stuff that's come out last year. And he's also said the two characters will be called Irish and Seth, and one of them is an immigrant who moved over at the age of 15, and the other's a bank teller. Um, some of the other things, saying so Rockstar have had a couple of job listings up recently. Um, so they've had one of them, which they've asked for a network programmer with, with someone who specialises in a wide range of gameplay mechanics found in uh, open world games. And um, the other one is they want an engineer that can be responsible for the integration of dynamic multiplayer uh, into all areas of gameplay in a complex open world environment, which does sound quite promising. But I think when you've got like a scale of like four years for stuff coming out, like even the people they're hiring now could be on stuff that we just don't even know anything about yet. But I still think that it's, um, yeah, it's something that we could potentially look into a bit. So it's, def it's definitely happening. Like I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's like it's like Skate Four as well. Like people going, oh, it's just a rumor. There's no way they're not working on that right now. There's just no way. Like <laughs> as soon as GTA like Five has like died down. And the last expansion did feel quite final to me. Um, it feels like the right time to start being like, hey, let's get hyped for the next one. And, and Red Dead Redemption was basically a universally loved game, I think, from everyone. I haven't met a single person who didn't think it was a masterpiece, honestly. Uh, I remember the ending. The ending always stuck with me, just because it was like a slightly bit different when they played that song as you're riding through the woods. Was that Gun? Did you play Gun as well? <laughs> no, I never played Gun. Gun was pretty good. That's so why I quite enjoyed Gun. I think Gun and... Red Dead Redemption, probably one of my two favourite. There was that PlayStation 2, Red Dead Redemption. I played Call of Juarez, if you ever played that. I saw that, but I never played it. It was, uh, whew, that was not good. And what? Uh, I, we used Red Dead Redemption, what made that game good, though, was the online. Like, the single player was yeah. good, do not get me wrong. But the online was so much fun. John Marsden, that was the guy's name, wasn't it? He's the protagonist, was that it? That yeah. was it, yeah. I think so. You could get horses. You could rob people's horses, couldn't you? You could tie them up and put them on train tracks. What, what features do you think they'll include in this one that wasn't in the last one? I don't know. I, I don't know. What I just really hope they do is make, like, what I hope they've learned from GTA Online and seen that the most fun people have had is when they've put in all this shit to do in the open world. So that's not just, 
oh, here's a silly little race or a mission. Like they've actually gone, you know, players can band together and have fights and do missions and then other people can try and stop them. Like all the stuff in the new update in GTA. I just think they need that because some of the best times I've read Dead Redemption was when me and my friends would be grouping up together. We'd run into another group and like some shit would just go down and we'd be at war with them, like in these streets, like proper Wild West stuff going on. I think so. I just hope it's just all about that. If there's any developer as well to do a big sort of open world multiplayer game, that would be good. It would probably be Rockstar. So like like we were saying before. Detail online, yes, yeah, su- suggests that to me. Yeah. I think yeah maybe maybe Red Dead Redemption would be like what I was hoping the division would be, where it'd be like just completely open world, people running around. I doubt it though. No, because Rockstar mm. they're they're always single player first, aren't they? Like they're never gonna not do. A cinema because they do do very good scripting and characters and stuff and with a multiplayer game like when like when i play borderlands by myself the story makes complete sense well i started playing the pre-sequel recently hadn't replayed really much of it but with friends i have no fucking idea what's going on in the story because it's just every time a quest comes up it's just yep let's go shoot stuff or well, what about uh, what i a... hope it's got a good single player as well to be fair it'd be cool if it was um it'd be cool if they like integrated quite nicely together um like i'm not sure how long i'm not sure like yeah if we had like multiplayer so like if each mission you could have people like if you ever played like multiplayer with far cry which didn't do it that well but tried to do it well where people could just jump in you could do a mission with someone and then they jump out and you just carry on playing through the game kind of thing that'd be quite nice i thought that was i thought that was like the best part of that game honestly was that i could do that with a friend yeah and yeah i guess we're definitely gonna see it this year bully bully 2 would be something I'd really want to see them release as well. Maybe like, do you ever play that ping pong game as well that came out? That was pretty good. I quite ping pong. Yeah. By Rockstar. Yeah. <laughs> no. It was like I think. I need like, to see this. I think it was like an Xbox 360 title, and it, they just like did really nice polished graphics, and they released. Uh... Oh my god! They made the game table tennis. Yeah. <laughs> my whole world has been shattered. <laughs> if you think of the amount of mini games they do in GTA and stuff now, like. No, but <laughs> like. So what games do you make? Oh, I made Grand Theft Auto, yeah, yeah. Red Dead Redemption, yeah, of course, of course. And table tennis, oh. Was someone really high, or, like, what happened? <laughs> they should probably make more mini-games. I reckon Rockstar could do, like, their own version of, like, Wii Sports, but do it, like... Oh, don't say that. Now. No, because oh. the Wii games are the big... Like, that's what's wrong with gaming, is Wii Sports, and Wii Sports Resort, and Wii Play, and Wii Music, and Wii orgy party family friendly fun times i think wii sports was the best selling game of all time at one point because that makes was, me uh, really sad in my heart but it was only because it was free with the wii and the wii was the best selling <laughs> console yeah. best selling game we didn't sell it it was the be- yeah I know. it got the title though because it was just bundled that's like it. saying crackdown was like like <laughs> was like the crackdown one was like a smashing success of a game no it had the halo 3 beta in the box well if it if it comes with the console then, like, you're arguably playing for both, aren't you? I guess, in a way. So. Okay, if I said selling. to you, you can get a free bar of soap if you pay me £10 for, an, for a second bar of soap, would you be like, I'm getting a free bar of soap? I'm. I mean, sorry, hang on, I explained that really badly. If I said to you, <laughs> give me £10 and I'll give you another bar of soap, I wouldn't be like, I'm selling you that second bar of soap. You'd just be like, I'm buying a bar of soap and getting another one with it. I guess it's like, yeah, it's like having the world's best-selling toothbrush, and then every time you buy yeah. it, you get a free bottle of toothpaste, which is the world's best-selling toothpaste. Yeah. Or maybe the I other way around cheating. would be better. Like toothpaste and toothbrush, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. How many toothbrushes are you going through? Well, would you, would you buy one? I don't know. It depends if it's cheaper than the toothpaste that you're getting. I don't know. <laughs> to replace my toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that got weird quick. Um... But yeah, so yeah, it's in a apparently, and apparently it's been in development for four years now, which um, which which is a good th- a good sign. Yeah, because these games are never going to take, I mean, especially Rockstar's games are never going to be able. How long did GTA Five come out now? Has that been three years ago now? Is it about? Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It must, no, it must be. Um, I waited like a, so long for it for on the PC, and then it's been so long since it was released on the PC. Now it's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, so Red Dead Redemption, 2016, most likely going to come out. Uh, if it doesn't, I don't know what will. Hopefully Bully will instead, but uh, at the moment it's looking <laughs> strong, likely it's going to be Red Dead Redemption. You're just really hoping someone from Rockstar is watching, aren't you? <laughs> just make Bully too. It'd be really good. <laughs> I liked Bully. 
<laughs> it got me to it got me to play through when I was a child rather than getting like bullied I could play as the bully and it would give me like a little power trip as I was going through it <laughs> I see Tim so you just like you know manipulating and people <laughs> and being sadistic is what you're saying I just take out all the abuse I got on other people through bullying <laughs> um, should we quickly have a little chat about that question um, in chat on Twitch yeah so ceremonials Ceremonials, yeah, ceremonials two three hundred. I said before we go, what's our opinion on how much longer the consoles will be here, and how do we think the future of Xbox, PS, and PC is? That's a long, that's a big question, isn't it? Well, consoles. If you mean consoles at all, like if they can exist, I think they'll be around as long as gaming is a, a viable market. Um, even though I don't think they're as simple as they used to be, like PS4, you have to install and blah, blah, blah. It's still the fact that someone can just plug it into their telly, whack the game in, and they can go. They don't have to worry about OS or RAM or there won't, there drivers. Won't be, there won't be any game consoles and PCs or in 20 years, I'm saying, because I think everything's going to go cloud and uh, no one's going to have any hardware on Ooh, site. That's a ballsy prediction. I like it. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think it's just going to happen. It's like, who's... T like, so Every time you bring this up, then doesn't someone else bring up the Ouya, and it gets really awkward? I think, I think, yeah, I do bring this up quite a lot, <laughs> but I do definitely think that's where we're going. I don't think everyone's going to have like really. Crazy See, I, I just don't agree with you. Like, what, what, what incentive do they have to standardise the gaming industry? Like, think how much, how much extra money is created just from the fact that people have to buy a separate console. Think of it from the perspective of like Netflix or like Steam or something like that. I think it's like, you know, if, if everything's just being played on, on one server or one server in specific places, um, and then, you know, all the hardware is going to be the same, so everyone's going to get the same performance across everything. It's it's a lot cheaper for people to buy. So, you know, rather than building your own PC, I mean, there is a massive market that will probably just die, but I think everything's going thin like The only thing stopping them doing it now with stuff like OnLive is basically the internet connection. And I think once that gets up, because I'd rather not have I'm any, on live, like, not yeah. Yeah, I'd rather I mean. I'd rather have like, yeah. I don't want to have any hardware. I don't have any like. I don't have to buy an expensive graphics card. I'd rather pay like twenty quid a month for like this range PC and just be playing it on like a remote server, which is still what I think it's going to be. Like what what like I mean I can see the incentives of like PC manufacturers and console developers, but like you know hardware is just getting smaller and smaller. And uh, like less powerful, you know. There's only there's only so much thinner they can make people's phones. There's only so much thinner they can make, or like less powerful they can make stuff. You know, Crackdown Three was like the first game to offer like some cloud support where you can um yeah. Use stuff. It's just gonna it's just gonna happen, man. It's gonna happen. I hope so because it sounds cool. I just I don't trust humanity enough to do something that's actually cool and benefits us as a species and technologically. <laughs> it's just like electricity. Is my opinion on it. So, like, yeah, they used to. Everyone, people used to have their own generators and make their own electricity. Oh, you so, say so? You mean like Thomas Edison? Because he was such a great guy. <laughs> wow, you literally chosen the example that proves my point. The hardest. no, no, no. But as an industry, right? So, like, yeah, everyone had their own generator. Oh, Tesla's doing some cool shit, is he? No. Yeah, fuck but we that don't. Guy. I don't. You don't have a. I'm gonna sell it for money. You don't have a power generator, do you? In your house, you have it like the do national you know, grid. And... I live in a bunker, ready for D-Day. <laughs> That's just going to be the same. No, one's, no one needs all this stuff. No, I, I agree with you, honestly. I think we are moving towards that as well. I just and don't think that there will ever not be a console like market with different brands and stuff. It'll just be like a PlayStation Home box. It'll be a tiny little box that people plug in. Yeah, and it'll, go it'll just still be their console. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, guys, for joining in this week, um, whoever's watching. Um, yeah, this has been sort of the Game Debate livecast. And uh, if you want to catch us again, we'll be on next week again from 5 to 6 on Sunday. Uh, if you do sort of like this stuff, you can follow our YouTube channel as well, and uh, you can check out sort of articles and other content on Game Debate, where you can also check the latest PC specs and game stuff. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Thanks again, Jack, for uh, thanks guys speaking this week, and uh, we'll probably talk to everyone next week. Cool. Yes, indeed, we will. Bye. Bye, guys.